Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about playing video in Unity. Specifically, we're going to use the Unity video player, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can set it up to play in slightly different modes. So to set up this project, I've just created an empty project, dropped in a video file of one of my previous YouTube videos, and we're going to start just kind of from scratch. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to Game Object and actually just create a video player. So under Video, there's the Video Player option. And you see here we've got a couple options. We've got a source, so we can give it a URL or a video clip. So if we wanted to do something from the web, just do it there. Um, we have a field for the video clip. We have an option to play on awake. This is just you know when it first starts up, do you want it to start playing or do you want to have to call the play method to actually kick it off? Uh, we have the wait for first frame or to just wait before starting the video. I think it waits for the frame to be ready. Uh, loop option, playback speed, pretty obvious. Uh, render mode, this is one we're going to talk about and get into a little bit more. Target texture, uh, some aspect ratio, and output audio stuff. So let's just start by dropping a video in and then go through the different parts that we need to access. So here we go, we've got the video there. And right now it's set to render texture. So right now nothing is going to actually show up because there's no texture. So I'm going to switch over to camera near plane first. And I'm going to drag over my game view so we can see that kind of side by side. And I'm going to mute the audio just so it doesn't start playing over me. And hit play. And let's see what happens. So you may notice that nothing's happened. The reason for that is when we're in camera near plane mode, we need to assign a camera. So let's stop drop the main camera in here, hit play one more time, and we should see a video just start playing. There we go, video is playing, play on awake is checked. Um, I can crank up the playback speed, yeah, watch myself talk really, really fast. Um, but you know, I think you kind of get the idea. Now let's create a game object. Let's go in here and just create a cube and zero out the position. So just reset this thing. And you notice that we see it here, we don't see it over here. So what's happening is the video player is rendering right at the front of the camera, at the near plane. So it's the closest thing. Nothing else is going to be visible you know, with that up there. It's just essentially going to take over the entire screen. Now one of the options on the video player was to switch to far plane. So if we do that, all of a sudden you notice that the cube is there. I can move the cube around. You know, we could do stuff. We could actually have the video playing kind of in the background of any other stuff that we want running or going on. So if we want to have a UI there that's showing up, or I guess I think we could still drop a UI in front of the near plane though, with the overlay. But if we want to have, you know, like an actual 3D object UI or some other interactions going on, some animations, particles, whatever it is, we can have those there just by switching it to far plane mode. Now if you don't want that and you want the video to just take over, just switch it to near plane and it's going to be right up there in their face and it'll kind of hide all the other stuff that you don't really want visible at the time. Now let's go into some of the other options here. So if we look at the video player again, there was far plane and near plane. I think those are both pretty obvious what they're doing. There's also render texture and material override. So I think we'll start with... Let's start with material override and then we'll go to render texture since it's a tiny bit more complicated. So first let's um, let's create a cube and it's at, I'm going to reset it to 000 and I'm going to create a material. Just go create and material and I'm going to call this cube and I'm just going to assign this to the cube. Now we shouldn't see any difference because my new material, it's on there, uh, it looks exactly the same. You can't really tell the difference because it was solid white but I just want to make sure that you realize that it is assigned there and then let's go to the video player again and switch over to that material override and then let's just drop in the cube so there we go drop the cube right there hit play and then watch the video is actually playing on the cube and if you look here it's actually just updating this material and setting the essentially setting the texture. Sure, it does some pretty fancy stuff behind the scenes to make it a bit faster. But it, for for your purposes, you're essentially just updating your texture on your material and playing the video just like that. So here you can see it's coming on all the sides. Uh, of course, it's upside down and you know at different orientations because this isn't a plane. Now, if we want to just render it on an object in the world, what we do is. Um, delete the cube and maybe come out with a plane or a quad. So drop a quad out here 
Let's select that thing. And then assign that to the video player. So there we go, just drop that in. And now we can have like an actual screen in the game. So if you're gonna put a, you know, a video screen in your game that's playing a video off in the background, I mean, other, of course you wanna check out performance and make sure that you don't kill your game with it. But if you do, you can just sit, simply put in a quad, assign a video player and have it play on a loop and it'll just kind of work, which is nice. Now the last thing I wanna dive into is the render texture option. So if you right click down here in your project view, you can do create, and you should be able to select a render texture right here. Now the render texture has some size settings, so by default it's at 256 by 256. Um, Anti-aliasing, some color formatting stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna dive into those right now. What you're really gonna wanna worry about though is the size. So let's just call this, um, I'll leave it named actually, a new render texture. I'm gonna go to the video player, and then switch this over to render texture and then we'll assign the texture here. Now any material that's using this render texture will be updating with the video instead of whatever's on there. So usually we use render textures for things like uh, mini maps, um, other overlays to show what another camera is seeing. In this case, instead of showing what a camera is seeing, we're just showing what the video player has. Now the last thing I wanna show is how you can interact with the video player through code. So we're just gonna create a new script. I'm gonna do it directly on the video player for now, just for simplicity. And we'll just call this a video control. Generate up a new C Sharp script and we'll pop that up in Visual Studio. And with this script, we can do a lot of things like control the current time, view the current time, modify playback speed, uh, play, pause, all that fun stuff that you would normally do in a video player but now you get to write the code to actually control it instead of having it just automatically work for you. So let's do a little bit of that and just show you how you would set that up. So maybe we'd, uh, I think we'd delete this out. We'll make a private void awake method. And then in here we'd cache the video player. So just do video player equals get component video. Oh, gotta get that in there, video player. And generate that out as a field. And then um, in maybe in our update, we just do video player, or here, let's see, how do I wanna do this? Let's go, let's add a bool field right here. So private bool should play, and we'll make that serialized so it shows up in the editor. Just add that serialized field attribute, and I'm gonna resize some of this stuff. Get this out of the way so you can see more code and less junk. Okay, cool. So then we could go into here and be like, um, if should play video player dot play else. Oh, I don't like that. Video player dot pause. And again, this wouldn't be ideal because we'd just be switching or hitting play and pause over and over, even though should play hasn't changed. But I just want to show that you can call these things. Uh, like I said, also you could get into video player dot time to set the current time or you can check the frame and the uh, frame count to get a percentage of how far along you are through the video. You just do the, uh, what is it, frame divided by frame count and give you that percent. And then useful for controlling things or if you wanna show a progress bar or a time bar or something else like that, you could just access these properties here. So let's save, um, I'll jump back over to the editor. We'll play with my totally unoptimized code there that's gonna keep calling pause over and over and play over and over, and then we'll wrap this up. So there we go, it's not playing, I check the box, and you should see, it's kinda of hard to see from here, but I am animating and moving. Oh, I almost forgot the render texture thing, so see how blurry this is? That is the side effect of the render texture size. So what you ideally want to do is set this to the resolution of the video that's going to be playing. So 1920 by 1080 would be right. Um, I want to do that when I'm not in the middle of playing though. 1920 by 1080. Oh, There we go. Save. Actually, I haven't saved my scene. Let's just call that demo. Hit play one more time. And our video should be, there we go. Much less blocky and I can control it with my little checkbox. So there's a lot to the video player that you can do. Um, it's still pretty early. It's not the most performant control, but it's much better than it used to be. And it's really, really simple to use. So if you need to add video to your project, just you know, 
play with the video player, try it out. Uh, one important thing though, make sure that you test it on your min spec system. Don't just assume that because it runs on your badass high-end system that everything's gonna be fine on a low-end setup. So I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have questions about the video player, please feel free to ask below. I'll try to answer them or a lot of times other people in the comments answer the questions too, which is great. Thanks for everybody that does that. Um, if you like the video, please hit like, share it with your friends, you know, hit subscribe, and uh, come join us at the site at unity3d.college to send out daily emails with little tips and tricks and stuff like that, you know, things like this. And thanks for watching.